Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Alex and this is Emma. And in today's video, we want to share with you why we hated the Philippines the first time we visited and why now it's one of our favorite places to travel. As a travel destination, the Philippines have been getting a lot of praise in recent years, especially amongst travel YouTubers and influencers. In this video, we will be talking about why it's so popular and share our personal experiences of traveling there, the good and the bad. In the previous episodes, we had started our YouTube channel and began trying out a number of ideas to help save money and work towards traveling full time. We started out with videography work in the Maldives and Sri Lanka, couch surfing in Korea and work away in Japan. And although these options led on to some pretty unique and memorable experiences, none of them seemed like a feasible route to full-time travel. Our next stop on our journey was Cebu, in the central Visayas region of the Philippines. We were excited for the warm weather and to experience a new country for the first time and the activities and trips we had planned, but unfortunately the excitement didn't last long and this is also where depression started to rear its ugly head. The trip started out well when we met up with a friend of ours who we met in Korea, Kengi, and he was working in a hostel in Cebu. If you saw the Korea episodes, you'd see that we met Kengi on couch surfing and he was a like an artist and photographer who would take basically normal situations with people dressed as mermaids. <laughs> and so while we were in the Philippines, we helped him out on a couple of projects and we even got to parasail as mermaids. <laughs> One of the things that was right at the top of our bucket list of things to do and see whilst in the Philippines was to go and see the whale sharks. And we were told of a really great place to go and do that, which was Oslob. So we had swam with manta rays in the Maldives in the wild and yeah. it was one of the best experiences. So like we couldn't have been more excited and we made the four and a half hour drive down to Oslob to go and see these things, but it was not what we expected. When we arrived, we got there first thing in the morning to avoid the crowds and we had our orientation, which basically kind of talked about safety things, but also they talked about how you should keep one to two meters distance between you and the whale sharks and be really careful not to touch them or anything like that. So we had high hopes. Yeah, we? basically a lot of rules about how to deal with the animals. So we definitely had a lot of high hopes, but the moment we hit the water, basically all rules were out the window. <laughs> it was a war zone. It was crazy. There was splashing and thrashing and Kicking. it was awful. I remember specifically this uh, one of the sort of tour guides that take you out there that he was helping uh, one of the sort of guests to take a picture and that person was just kicking the whale shark in the face like with their fins and the person taking the photo the tour guide didn't care. Yeah he had no issues with it there was no like oh could you you know get away from the whale shark a little bit or whatever and we went away from that experience feeling pretty upset actually we were sad because of the situation and also we were kind of disappointed in ourselves for not researching it properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of vote every time you pay really. Yeah. So now when we look for nature things, we make sure we look into something that is a bit more sort of ethically or environmentally friendly. Yeah. Um, and there are places in the Philippines you can do that, but for us, Oslo was not the place. No. We were so confused by our experience here because a lot of people are recommended to us. Mm. Um, that I kind of wanted to know what even the locals thought of this. So I asked one of the tour guides um, and I was actually quite surprised at his response. So do you think that it is bad or good to have to feed them so the tourists can swim with them? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's good to feed them because they're such like human, they feel hungry too. And you want to touch them? Yeah, you can touch them. And then if you want to feed them, yeah, you can feed them. No harm about it. And I think there's no violation if you're going to feed the animal for that way. But although this experience was really disappointing for us, it definitely wasn't the low point of the trip. No, that wasn't why we hated the Philippines the first time. Unfortunately, that reason was, uh, was a lot bigger. Yeah. So up until this point, I'd had the odd bad day, I suppose, and um, yes, they were becoming more frequent, but the feelings that I had in the Philippines were unlike anything I'd actually had before, and that not only was I feeling sort of sad and unhappy and down, but also there was this kind of like emptiness, which 
I hadn't had before that point in time where I just, I didn't really feel anything a lot of the time. A lot of the hours in the day, I just felt kind of empty and I didn't really feel much. And that in turn meant that I just wasn't motivated or interested in doing anything. And, and then actually the thing that I found the hardest was the guilt that came with that. You know, I felt like such a selfish cow for, for being in this beautiful island with this long list of stuff that I was going to go and see and do over the next number of months and I wasn't happy. It was at this point that I started to suspect that Emma had depression. Like we obviously spend a lot of time with each other with the travel lifestyle so you can kind of see this shift in change over time and um, these sort of, sort of subtle differences so I did a lot of looking online and it was starting to become glaringly obvious that that was the case. Depression is an absolute and really you don't want to let those feelings fester if you think you have any inkling of those kind of feelings anywhere go and get help asap she needs to be nipped in the bud or she will cause all kinds of havoc it never actually crossed my mind that what i was experiencing was symptoms of an illness and with that means that there's actually some things that can help so really the first step like everyone says is to go and get help, but it's true. But the thing is, I think not everyone realizes how hard it is to just admit that you're having those feelings and that you're struggling. But even if going to the doctors physically actually terrifies you, at least try and organize like a telephone consultation or something. I think really just getting past that first hurdle and that first step is the thing that really you could put off for years on end, but you really shouldn't. We continued to travel the Philippines and went to Palawan, which was visually spectacular. Wonderful. The problem is that depression had really started to yeah. get its claws in. And so, although, yeah, visually it looked great, it was at best like a cloudy haze. Yeah. And as beautiful as it was, if you can't enjoy being somewhere that looks like that, then what's the point? Also, I just want to say is that like, so in this experience of depression, Emma is the person that had depression, but from my experience of a partner or someone with depression, it comes over to you. Yeah. Like, so we kind of talk about depression as something that both had, even though basically Emma was the one that was yeah. diagnosed with it. But I'm sure anyone that's suffering with depression or the partners can relate that it's, um, it extends outwards. Yeah, you definitely go through it together, like as a couple. It's not, I mean, at the end of the day, when you care about someone, like you can't detach yourself from seeing Someone's them suffering. feeling like that. Yeah, exactly. So although our first trip to the Philippines didn't exactly go as we'd hoped, luckily this wasn't the last time we went. And we actually, we ended up going back two more times and we had an absolute blast. Now we can say that the Philippines is easily one of the best countries yeah that we like to go and travel yeah. and uh, we highly recommend it to anyone watching. Definitely. I think some of my best memories of the Philippines is hiring scooters and exploring islands like Bohol and Siargao and Sikyo. So we've been talking about happiness a lot recently and one thing for sure that makes me happy is just the open road and just driving along with this one here. It's me, hey, that's me. The people are incredible. Yeah. Like really, really special people. Um, it might be that because in Asia they have the best English. Yeah. So you can really connect with them, but oh God, they are some seriously friendly people. If you're a big consumer of travel content, something you probably would have noticed is that content creators love <laughs> to go to the Philippines. We bloody love it. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the big ones is that it's an awesome country to travel. Another reason content creators love to go there is the effect that it has on the numbers. Philippines does extremely well yeah. on YouTube. Definitely, yeah. If you go back and you look at our videos in the Philippines, compared to whatever countries are either side of them, you will see a massive increase in views. So of course it's going to attract a lot of people because if you look at it this way, if you're a travel creator, you can go to a beautiful country, mm, you get yeah. to make money from doing it. Like it's a no brainer of why you would go there. We didn't know about this the first time we visited the Philippines, but we definitely started to come around to it the second and third time we visited when our ad revenue shot up to like 
five times the amount we would usually get in a month. And when you're mad. on a journey to try and make this sort of a sustainable life yeah. and you start to see the kind of numbers and money that allows you to go and then make a different series. So you could go there, make a profit and invest that into another series. Mm. Like, I mean, it's fantastic. And it was the first time that we had ever made a profit on a trip. Our passion has been making videos yeah. and that genuinely does make us happy. Mm -hmm. uh, when we came to the Philippines, this was the first time that we were able to make money that would the possibility of being full-time doing this kind of thing yeah. and that's something that we are really interested in exploring so we want to give that a real go this year and also going back to people watching your videos like at the end of the day you you spend hours sometimes days on videos and when you actually see people watching them and enjoying them and sharing them it's really nice I can imagine it's the same for artists you know if you, you make some beautiful painting and nobody sees it like what's the point it's like the tree falling in the woods scenario <laughs> Were we really there <laughs> if nobody was watching it? The downside is when you go to one of these countries is that basically you're kind of catering to a local audience so mm. they only want to see people like in their country mm. and in turn it makes it hard for a travel vlogger to create an audience. To be honest we have no judgment or any kind of feelings towards those people because if that's what you love doing and you love traveling the Philippines and filming it then of course you want an audience that shares that love of traveling the Philippines with you. So despite the Philippines basically kind of being the place where the depression all started, yeah. it also played a pivotal role in beating it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it helped us basically create this lifestyle that we've done now in figuring out who our audience is you know like we we knew after those trips to the philippines by like the end of the third trip we knew that we wanted an audience that wanted the variety of travel that didn't take life too seriously that likes nature and wildlife essentially us and you in in you. <laughs> That's what we want. It didn't make sense to us to create a lifestyle for YouTube that we didn't want to live ourselves. Yeah. So for us, we had to enjoy what we were doing and in turn, we needed our audience to be the type of people who would enjoy that content as well. Yeah, this whole journey has been to create the life that we want to live. Exactly, it's all selfish, really. Yeah. <laughs> really, we're so happy that it's led us down this path and we, we didn't go off in different directions along the way because the audience that we have got now, you guys are pretty awesome. We I'll give it to you. love your eyeballs glued to the screen, <laughs> looking at our faces. Let us know in the comments down below. Have you ever been to the Philippines before? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let us know. Have you ever had any huge letdown? Something you're really <laughs> looking forward to? Because the whale shark experience was probably my biggest travel letdown that yeah. I've experienced That's compared to the manta rays, which was one of the biggest travel highs. Yeah. But on a positive note, maybe you could also leave in the comments what your best wildlife experiences have been and share it with us because maybe we want to go and experience it too. It's that time again. Come on, like the video because if you don't, apparently we're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And tell all your family and friends to watch the travel bees. <laughs> okay, <laughs> everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans out. So we're walking on the street and somebody on the corner just spat and it splattered all over mine and Alex's feet. Pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs>